Modular synthesizers have been around since the 60s, with Buchla and Moog starting a kind of revolution, allowing users to create one-of-a-kind synthesizers by patching together individual modules, giving users control over not just the parameters, but the signal path. Then, in the 90s, Dupfer created the Eurorack standard, spurring on a wealth of new possibilities. And now Softube has created Modular, a digital recreation of the modular synthesizer experience. Now you can experiment, learn, create cool sounds without needing to devote a whole room to your hardware. And learning to patch, by the way, won't just teach you how to create and use modular systems. You'll develop a deeper understanding of synthesizers in general. So let's get to it. This is the first thing you see when you open Softube Modular, which is essentially an empty rack into which you can place any of these modules. You can add these modules in any order you want and connect them in any way you want. Let's start with a simple sine wave oscillator. This module does one thing. It just generates a sine wave continuously. You control the frequency of the sine wave here and we connect it from its output jack to the main outputs with a virtual patch cord. Now we can hear the sine wave we're generating. And I can manually scan through the frequencies by moving the pitch knob. But ideally, we have a more elegant way to control this. And in fact, we do. If we open a MIDI to CV module, this will translate MIDI information from a keyboard into control voltage, which is how parameters are controlled in modular synthesizers. The pitch of the oscillator will change based on the voltage it receives at its CV input. I hit keys on my keyboard, that becomes control voltage, which tells the sine wave oscillator to produce the pitches that correspond to that control voltage. Now, when I'm done hitting keys, you'll notice the note just goes on ringing. Well, that's because the sine wave oscillator is going to oscillate forever. So we need a voltage-controlled amplifier. It accepts a signal input, allows us to adjust the gain of that input, and we can send that adjusted value to an output. In and of itself, that doesn't solve our problem. But we can influence the level of the amplifier via control voltage as well. And the gate from our MIDI to CV module transmits voltage when the key is down and stops when the key is back up. So if we send that to the CV in of the amplifier, when a key is pressed down, the level gets louder. And when we let go, the level gets quieter. So now we just want the quieter level to be silence. So when we press a key, we get sound. And when we let go, we get silence. We just built a keyboard-controlled sine wave synthesizer. Pretty cool. Now, let's delete this sine wave oscillator and see if we can get some more interesting sounds in here. The Dupfer A110 is also a voltage-controlled oscillator with more waveforms. Its sine wave is a little more gritty. It also has a triangle wave, a saw, and what we're going to use pulse wave. And you can control the duty cycle or the pulse width to dramatically change the sound. Let's leave it here for the moment. We'll come back. This, like on the sine wave oscillator, controls the overall pitch. So let's connect up our MIDI to CV to that. Range Adjust the octave. Let's get our key press controlled gate set up again. It's worth repeating this, you're gonna do it over and over. Send our signal to the amplifier, then send the amplifier to the outputs. Gate still connected to CVN. Now, I think the sound of the pulse width adjusting is interesting. So let's get that to happen automatically. We'll need a low frequency oscillator. This is the A147, which gives us a variety of waveforms. 
oscillating slowly at a low frequency, hence the name. So to give you a sense of what the LFO does, I'm going to use its waveform to drive the CV input of our sine oscillator. You see it's adjusting the pitch cyclically. We can do that pretty quickly or relatively slowly with a kind of pulse on and off. The saw shape increases frequency and we get some spaceship sound effects. Okay, you get the idea. Let's kill the sine wave. That was just for demonstration. We're gonna use the LFO to modulate the pulse width of our pulse wave. Let's try the triangle wave. We send it to CV2, which controls pulse width modulation. And now we can hear, as the triangle of the LFO ramps up and down, it's adjusting the pulse width correspondingly. We can make it a narrower sweep. And again, we can change how quickly the parameter changes with frequency. But I think I want something more subtle. We we'll use a smooth sine wave with a low frequency. This gives a kind of subtly evolving character. It's nice. So a basic synthesizer contains an oscillator, some kind of modulation, like this LFO, and a filter. For that, we're going to use the A108, which has a variety of low-pass filters, meaning they cut out high frequencies, and one band-pass filter, which we'll talk about later. So instead of sending our VCA straight to the outputs, we're going to send it to the filter. And we get our signal back by selecting which filter we want. We're going to do the 24 dB per octave low pass. And you hear that it cuts out some of the high frequencies. We can control where that cutoff is as we're sweeping through the cutoff frequencies. You might see an opportunity here as well. We can use the LFO to make that happen dynamically too. Let's see what that sounds like. Pretty neat. The only dial we haven't talked about yet is the emphasis which is a familiar resonance or cue control. So we have a pulse wave whose width is controlled by a low frequency oscillator sent to a low pass filter whose cutoff frequency is also automated. It's not a very complicated patch, but it's demonstrated some of the major pieces in modular synthesizers. And more importantly, it sounds pretty cool. Now, there's one more technique I want to show you that you'll use all the time to give your patches a more musical playability. Right now, starting and ending the notes is a little abrupt. Notes are either on or off, and there's no transition in between. But an ADSR module allows us to shape the notes, the attack, decay, sustain, and release, giving us a response more like typical keyboards. Instead of triggering on off in binary fashion at the amplifier, we're going to send the gate signal from the MIDI module to the ADSR module, where we can shape the gate signal, and then we'll send that back to the CV input of our amplifier. Now we get some more control over how the note behaves. When I let go of the key, the notes kind of fade away now. That's release and it can be every bit as abrupt as before, or really long. Let's do something a little bit more moderate. Now, attack shapes the onset of the notes. Long attacks fade us in. Shorter attacks are more immediate. Now, sustain controls the volume as I'm holding down the key. Let's make the sustain level low for demonstration. And decay is how long it takes to get from the attack volume to the sustain volume. Between all of these controls, you can create a very responsive, playable instrument that's tailored precisely to the part you're playing. 
And so you'll find ADSR controls on just about every synthesizer, not just modular systems. Okay, that's it for this time. If you have any questions about building a patch, ask me in the comments. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, subscribe so you catch my future videos, and as always, thanks for watching. I'm Zahergal. I'll see you next time.